Hi everyone, welcome to MDVOD, your health live and on demand here on EmpowerMe.tv. I'm Dr. John Kennedy and today you'll learn about coronary artery disease, a disease that is the leading cause of death for both men and women in the United States and affects about 16 million people with millions more living with the disease still undiagnosed. Nearly a million Americans will have heart attacks this year, so it's important to understand the signs of coronary artery disease and know if you're at risk, because the first time presenting with the disease for 50% of women and two-thirds of men is with a heart attack or sudden cardiac arrest. Whether you're a student, a firefighter, an athlete, or even Larry King, you or someone you love may be at risk. As we do with every illness, we'll help you understand what coronary artery disease is, who's at risk, what the symptoms are, the diagnosis, and available treatments and therapies. We'll discuss the consequences and reality of living with coronary artery disease, insurance coverage, and related costs. And later, I'll be joined by cardiovascular surgeon, Dr. James McPherson, one of the leading experts on this disease, who will answer your questions live in the studio. So join us as we simplify this disease and provide you with the information needed to help you prevent it from happening to you and the ones you love. Welcome back to MDVOD, where we're talking today about coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease, or CAD, is caused by a buildup of plaque, also known as atherosclerosis, which leads to blockages in the walls of tiny tube-like structures about the half the diameter of a pencil, known as the coronary arteries. These arteries are designed to carry oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle. As the plaque deposits in the wall of the blood vessel, it decreases blood flow and in some instances weakens it, causing it to tear or rupture. When this happens, the body tries to repair itself, causing a clot to form, which unfortunately completely blocks the artery, causing a heart attack. So how do you know if you're at increased risk for this disease? The most common risk factors are high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, and a family history of early coronary artery disease. What are the most common symptoms? As the blood vessel narrows, blood flow to the heart muscle decreases, causing symptoms known as angina pectoris. Symptoms tend to vary and are different for everyone, though a common description of angina is a pressure or squeezing in the middle of your chest. Additional symptoms include varying degrees of shortness of breath, often accompanied by sweating, nausea, and lightheadedness. These symptoms usually occur with exertion because when we're active, the heart muscle needs more blood. If the blood vessel is narrowed, like the waist of an hourglass, a supply and demand imbalance occurs and we develop symptoms. Up next, we'll sit down with cardiovascular surgeon, Dr. James McPherson, to hear his expert advice on coronary artery disease. Welcome back to MDVOD. Joining me to discuss this debilitating and potentially devastating disease is esteemed colleague and cardiovascular surgeon, Dr. James McPherson. Thank you so much for joining us, James. John, Pleasure thanks for inviting me. Thank you. And you know, after holding and healing literally thousands of hearts and seeing this disease, coronary artery disease, firsthand, you know, how, how do we diagnose this disease? Well, John, coronary artery disease is the number one cause of death in the United States. It uh, kills more people than all forms of cancer. So making the diagnosis really depends on getting a doctor and getting a series of simple tests that can make a big difference in terms of long-term outcome. EKG, echo, uh, and ultimately coronary angiography, which is a special x-ray that shows areas where the coronary arteries can be blocked. So once you've had a regular stress test, uh, an example would be an exercise treadmill that's abnormal, they would be referred for an angiogram that might show a blockage. Is that, is that That's much? right. Okay. And an angiogram is a dye study where we inject dye into the arteries that fill the heart. Once the x-ray is taken, we can see whether the dye is not filling an area of the heart properly, and then that generally is an area of a problem. Okay. So, and once we've made this diagnosis, what, what are the treatments available? There are three potential uh, treatments for coronary disease. The first one is medical therapy. A medical therapy, as you know, includes a, um, a nitroglycerin under the tongue or other forms of medicine to decrease the blood pressure. 
The second option is angioplasty. Angioplasty is a procedure where a small catheter or tube is placed inside the coronary artery. A balloon is on that tube. When the balloon is inflated, the artery opens, reestablishing the flow of blood. For people who have either too many blockages or when angioplasty has failed, then coronary bypass surgery is recommended, and that's what I do. Coronary bypass surgery is an operation where a person goes to sleep, it's general anesthesia, and using arteries that run inside the chest and veins that run down the legs, we use those veins and arteries or conduits to go around the blockages. And it seems like there's never-ending research and data comparing stents to surgery to medications. Um, what I can say is that all are indicated and medications for coronary artery disease seem like the thing that's the most common. Is that right? That's true. Uh, most people who have coronary artery disease can be treated with either medical therapy or angioplasty. It's only a relatively small fraction that require heart surgery, mm -hmm. but using statins or drugs that lower cholesterol, uh, antihypertension medicines, uh, these are things that will keep you out of the operating room. That's great, great advice, and thank you very much. Um, what these medications, um, the ones that are more common, I would say, are the ACE inhibitors, the beta blockers, um, aspirin, Plavix. Um, what are some of the side effects that you commonly see with patients uh, that have coronary artery disease? Well, unfortunately, even the best uh, medications with the best intentions have side effects. Uh, even simple medicines like aspirin can be associated with gastrointestinal bleeding. So for people who have sensitive stomachs, we sometimes will decrease the dose of an adult aspirin, which is 325 milligrams, to a baby aspirin, which is 81 milligrams. Beta blockers are a very commonly used class of drugs that have the dual effect of decreasing the heart rate as well as decreasing the blood pressure. But beta blockers can be associated with depression, sometimes a, a lack of sexual performance as well. So getting heart patients to be compliant with their medicines is a serious challenge. Remember, all medications for coronary artery disease improve blood flow, decrease plaque buildup, decrease blood clots, and decrease the work of the heart. Examples include antiplatelet therapy, nitrates, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and statins. And as you could imagine, coronary artery disease is very expensive. In fact, it costs $109 billion per year in the United States. What can we do to reduce cost? Well, the old adage, uh, an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure, is very important for coronary disease. Uh, most of what we can do to control cost in coronary disease is preventing it from happening. And there are many websites uh, that can, people can go to to get information on this. The American Heart Association has excellent information at aha.org that talks about lifestyle changes that you can do to prevent or decrease the incidence of coronary artery disease. They include uh, watching what you eat, getting active, exercise is very important. In fact, uh, the First Lady has been a big proponent of getting more active in terms of decreasing your risk of heart disease, uh, controlling diabetes, controlling your blood pressure, cholesterol, and also getting a doctor. That's a very important thing. Again, outstanding advice. And we've heard it before, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And on that note, up next on An Apple a Day, we'll learn ways to prevent this disease from ever happening to you or a loved one. I'd like to thank Dr. James McPherson for being here today and for his outstanding advice. Thank you so much, thank Dr. You, McPherson. Thank you, John. Simple lifestyle changes can go a long way in terms of preventing coronary artery disease and help you achieve optimal heart health even after you've been diagnosed. Here's what will help heal and protect you from a heart attack. It's easier than you think. First, stop smoking. Get up and move, and if you can, walk 30 minutes daily. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Reduce stress in your life. And if you can, take a yoga, tai chi, or meditation class. All have been proven to lower your risk. I'd like to thank Dr. James McPherson for joining us and for sharing his expertise and for helping us understand the diagnosis and treatment of coronary artery disease. And if you missed any of today's show and for more information, please go to www.empowerme.tv. Thank you for joining us and I hope you found this information about coronary artery disease helpful. I'm Dr. John Kennedy and you're watching MDVOD, your health live and on demand 
here on EmpowerMe.tv. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and share us with your friends and family.